There's still plenty of time to tell your friends about the show. I mean, we're going to be here until 5 or 6 o'clock this evening. We're going to start building the American flag over on the North Hill here in just a bit. You're going to see that come together throughout the morning. And then tonight, it's the Downtown Carlisle Corvette Parade and Street Party. Always a good time to get out into the community, see the cars on the streets of Downtown Carlisle, visit the shops, dine in the restaurants, and just enjoy what the historic area has to offer. If you are in the parade, please note there's an all-new route this year. If you have any questions, our friends from the Downtown Carlisle Association are in guest services, and they can help you out. We will be staging over near the Carlisle Expo Center as your point of reference. So Team Chevrolet, they are a big part of what we do here at Corvettes in Carlisle. We're so thankful that they can make our event part of their annual tour, if you will. These gentlemen and ladies go to a lot of different events, and uh, to say that they choose to come to Corvettes in Carlisle, we don't just assume. So we're always grateful that they're here year in and year out. And they bring us something cool, something new, something fresh every year. And this year it's the Corvette E-Ray. And we have our friends Josh Holder, Chief Engineer to my left. Harlan Charles, he's down here on the right, he's the Corvette product manager, and Taj Jucker, the executive chief engineer. And Taj, I asked you yesterday, now that we have another day under our belt, I'll ask you again, what do you enjoy about coming to Corvettes in Carlisle? Uh, everything, except maybe the weather sometimes. But generally speaking, uh, Cor uh, Carlisle is one of the places we appreciate the most, uh, we look forward to the most. Uh, it's the largest event, and we see the most people, and seeing more customers is always better. So we're so lucky that people choose to come to events like this, and so all we have to do is show up, and we get a clinic, we get uh, trained customers, we get feedback, we get all sorts of stuff that's very, very valuable to us as we go back to our day jobs and try to figure out what's next. Well, we thank you for choosing to come here as well. And, and Josh, you're closest to me. I'll ask you the same question. What do you enjoy about Corvettes and Carlisle? Well, a lot of what Tad said, uh, being able to interact uh, with customers. I don't think people realize how much influence uh, you all have over the car. Your ideas uh, help make Corvette better. Uh, and we're always trying to improve uh, both the, the driving experience and everything about the ownership experience on Corvette. So we love being here and interacting with all of you. And just to tag onto that a little bit, um, we at G, you know, we work for General Motors. We're trying to do this very unusual car. And it's not like if, if we just say something the way we want it to go, it happens. There's a lot of pushback uh, in the company because it's, it's something very different than what we do. And so it's not just customer feedback to try to help mold the car, but we can give real examples of real people telling us real things. And so we can say, oh, as a Carlisle, I talked to a person, they wanted this or they didn't like that. And so we turn it into something that's a real customer speaking directly to us. And that carries a lot more weight than us as managers inside the company saying, well, we think this is what we should do. And Harlan, as I hand the microphone to you, again, you've been coming here for, for so many years. I'm sure the interactions are basically priceless along the lines of what Taj said. So when you present a vehicle like the E-Ray or a couple of years ago when it was the new C8 overall, how much effort and thought goes into, well, how do we present this? How do we inform the people about what's coming onto the market? Well, you know, it's very easy. You know, Corvette customers, I think we have the best and smartest customers in the world. And a lot of times they're up on everything. So we really have to... Uh, you know, I think what people really like to hear, we like to tell the stories and, and the thinking behind it and how everybody's influence really helped create this car. And the excitement really is to, to see these ideas come to life and finally get to show them to everybody here. And really, um, it's not like we have to think about too long or like train for how to present the car to customers or leadership. We're all complete geeks on this stuff. I mean, absolutely. I just took delivery of a, a Elkhart Lake a Stingray convertible for myself personally. Uh, we own, Josh has a garage full of Corvette. So it's something we live and breathe all the time. So it's not like we're these sort of generic managers and we happen to be assigned to Corvette. We've migrated to Corvette because we're passionate about it. Harlan deserves an enormous amount of credit for starting the ball rolling way back in 2005 on a mid-engine car. Harlan is fearless with leadership, saying what he thinks needs to happen. 
Not always the best move sometimes. But he's really started the ball rolling way back in the Dave Hill era, 2006. Maybe we should study it. Maybe we should consider it. Maybe we should actually not just assume doing another front engine car is the right thing to do. And so um, we quickly developed some data uh, from customers um, doing actual analysis on performance. We actually worked with Brad Miller on, okay, if you could do anything you wanted with the race car, it's like a blank sheet of paper. What would you do? And they would put the engine in the back. They had they run computer models about okay, what would be the fastest on the track? Everything else being the same except weight distribution. And so we had all this data that we were then able to take to leadership and say, you know what? If Corvette's going to continue to grow, we need to do it. We need to take just bite that off and just suck it up and go do it. We're now I just got a call actually last week. We need to get more tools, more parts. Uh, to be able to, to feed that desire. So it's really been kind of a global phenomenon, uh, but it's really here with folks like you and all the people we've talked to who really embraced it. Because there was a lot of fear, honestly. There was uh, people who thought, well, maybe we should keep making the C7 and the C8 at the same time, because we're not sure everybody would come along with us. But as the car was refined and developed and people saw what it was, those plans got scuttled. It was like, okay, who's going to buy the old car when the new car is like this? Uh, so, fantastic. Uh, you know, we've been through a lot uh, trying to get this car off the, the ground, but uh, we're hitting our stride now. I can't believe it. We're about to start our fifth model year already. So, 2021, two, three, four. Fifth model year we're starting. I just can't believe it. And uh, we still can't make enough of them. Uh, this 2023 model year is going to go down as one of the highest volume Corvette production years ever. Over 53,000 units. So you think about that. 53,000 cars. When people think of Corvette as a low volume car, there's not that many cars in the world that sell more than, more than that. Uh, people are buying SUVs and trucks. Those are high volume products, but for cars, it's surprising uh, where we rank. So, um, like I said, everybody's embraced the car tremendously, and uh, we brought up the Stingray, the convertible, the Z06, and uh, I should mention, uh, we've made 6,000 Z06s already. A lot of people think, oh, you're not making very many Z06s. We've hit a run rate of 1,000 a month, which is about the highest run rate we've ever had on Z06, and we're working on trying to get that as high as possible. So I know people are waiting for Z06s, and uh, we're trying to fill that need as fast as possible. So. Uh, we don't like to sit on our laurels. That's one thing we don't do. We're always working on something. We're always cooking up something. That's why we come to Carlisle and talk about something new. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to start with the E-Ray. So how many people were here yesterday? Show of hands. A lot. You guys are gluttons for punishment. <laughs> I can't believe it. So anyway, thanks for coming back. So you're going to hear a lot of the same stuff. Uh, so. The E-Ray is right here. Uh, this is in one of the new colors. Harlan will talk more about the new content for 24. It's not just the E-Ray. But the E-Ray is kind of the star of the show. It's the headliner. So it has a uh, you know, small block, V8 you're used to seeing in the Stingray. But it's augmented by an electric motor in the front, a very compact electric motor in the front. And people have come up to me and say, oh, you're going electric? Why are you doing this? Why, why are you following? The electric uh, trend. Are you pressured into this? And the answer is no. We wanted to do an all-wheel drive car from a long time ago. We had customers saying, why don't you give all-wheel drive like Porsche 911 Turbo, all-wheel drive, you've got all-wheel drive security, it might even be better on the track. But people had their own reasons for wanting all-wheel drive, and it was impossible when we had the engine in the front. There's just no way you could get a drive train through the super low rearward mounted uh, small block in the front. But when you put the engine in the back, now all of a sudden you have a path where you can put either a, a half shaft or, as we decided to do, put a battery in the tunnel, put a motor on the front. And we actually, we studied both ways, what would be the best way to do all-wheel drive. And it wasn't even close. Uh, honestly, the electric solution is far better and predates all of the commitments from General Motors to go all EV. So we were on board from a long time ago. When we first started architecting this car, we wanted to go this way. So now we get all-wheel drive. You also get more power. So if we've done mechanical all-wheel drive, you have the same amount of power. You're just distributing some of it to the front. 
Now you have additional power, 160 horsepower on the front axle. You have the security of all-wheel drive. And oh, by the way, it comes with a really nice efficiency flag on it. So we just thought it made a better car overall. No downsides, you don't lose the front trunk. Uh, you don't lose the great American ground-pounding V8 sound of our small block. So it's a still true performance car, but it just does things better. And so uh, we were able to take this car actually upscale without necessarily making it a hardcore track weapon. That's that's the Z06, a hardcore track weapon. We want to make this car the best all-around Corvette we could possibly make, and it was the electrification that helps us do that. So. That's kind of an overview of where we're going. I'm going to let Josh talk a little bit more about the technology under the hood and under the body, and then we'll have Harlan talk more about everything new for 24. So Tad mentioned uh, quite a number of years ago, we began working on the E-Ray. Uh, and if you get a chance to come over to the tent to see us, uh, please take a look at the rolling chassis. Uh, to us engineers, that's, that's really the work of art. Of course, you can see completed vehicles and pick your favorite color and sit in them and take a look. But the rolling chassis really shows the innovation that went into the E-Ray. And from the beginning, we planned this architecture to be capable of electrification so that the layout of the battery that nestles in the tunnel is no accident. We worked, as we were developing the body structure with the battery team, to make sure that we didn't miss out on some potential efficiency because of a few millimeters. So the, the E-Ray was laid out at the same time the next generation Corvette was, was coming to be. And like Tad mentioned, the, the mission of this car, and I want to emphasize if you guys can take one thing away today about the E-Ray, you, you do not have to plug it in. While this car is very efficient, and it is a hybrid, it is not a plug-in hybrid. Its mission is not fuel economy. Its mission, true to Corvette, is all about performance. And so the, the battery in the E-Ray is really, really small by electric vehicle standards. Only 1.9 kilowatt hours. I, I tell people, think of it like a uh, slow capacitor. It, it is really good at transferring uh, high amounts of energy, which is exactly what you need in a sports car, especially the E-Ray and the Corvette. We can take that kinetic energy that Tad was talking about that's normally expelled as heat as you're decelerating or applying the brakes and we often say it's free beer. We can take that, store it in the battery, and then redeploy it to enhance the driving experience. The E-Ray shares the tire sizes of the Z06, so you get this big aggressive stance uh, on the E-Ray to cover the, the big capable tires. And that being all-wheel drive, with a tire footprint that's a little bit wider than four feet, all transmitting torque to the ground, 655 combined horsepower provides some pretty blistering performance. Zero to 60 in two and a half seconds, and a quarter mile in 10 and a half seconds. Uh, a number of us have been driving the E-Race for, for a while now, and I can tell you that while, while it's a very different driving experience than the ZL6, which is all about driving on the track, uh, the E-Ray is so much fun to drive. Not just that acceleration performance I described. And the first time you, you get to experience it, you're like, oh my god, what just happened? <laughs> uh, it's almost violent uh, to experience that kind of acceleration when you have that much traction and that much torque and power. Uh, but the usable performance in everyday driving situations like uh, passing maneuvers or what Corvettes are best at, back road, canyon carving, being able to pull the car out of a turn, uh, the E-Ray really excels at that. So not only did we package the, the battery in the tunnel, we've got a uh, drive front drive unit, the electric motor, that provides 160 horsepower. Uh, Harlan likes to say it's 10 more horsepower than the 53 Corvette had all on the front axle. It's a very small, compact, in fact, the armature is about the size of a coffee can, and it makes 160 horsepower. We tried to make the additional electrification hardware as lightweight as possible, so the case of the drive unit is magnesium. It's uh, bolted together with aluminum fasteners. Everywhere we could save some extra weight to offset what we had to add to enhance performance of the e we did. It comes standard with uh, carbon ceramic brakes. Uh, another uh, mass saving and the 12 volt battery so that 
12 volt system that operates the electrical, rusty electrical system in the car is also a lithium ion battery and e ray, another way to, to save weight. We can uh, all back each other up and probably talk for hours about the e ray, uh, and we'll go back and forth as one of us remembers uh, what the other forgot, but I'll turn it back over to Taj. I just want everybody to know, uh, Josh mentioned the truck front drive unit and the battery. We actually make those from scratch, totally bespoke in Michigan. So we generally design the car in Michigan, build it in Kentucky, but the, the battery pack and the front drive unit are completely unique, not shared with any other car, no other General Motors car. It's completely designed for this car, and we make it in Brownstown, Michigan, all the way down to the windings of the motor. So it's not like we buy a motor and plug it in. The, the windings of the motor. We use rare earth magnets. The thing is so powerful. Um, some people might be sitting there saying, you know, 160 horsepower, that's not, that's not like a lot. You can actually jerk the front tires uh, because this car has a 42, 58 weight distribution. So we can't actually get that much more power down. So 160 might not sound, well, why didn't you do 260 and 500 on the front? It's just because you can't get the power down. When you accelerate, this car rears back, actually takes weight off the front. And so there's only so much you can put down up there. So we found we really wanted to do just a really well-balanced car and not add any more mass than we had to. So um, I actually have one of the fasteners. Josh talked about we use aluminum fasteners. That might not seem like a lot, but that, that's an engineering masterpiece. Just the bolt that holds the thing together. There's a whole bunch of these uniquely designed, custom-made for us. It's part of the whole system that we do that we optimize for Corvette here in Bay America. Carl? Yeah, that's great. And you know, when you think about the E-Ray, you get a lot of questions on it. It's not very often that we introduce a new model to the Corvette lineup and a new name. We actually trademarked E-Ray back in 2015 uh, when this concept came together. And people, um, you know, they, somehow, you know, things get out. You know, when the trademark was applied, people instantly recognized it was going to be a Corvette with some type of electrification. And it really is based on, you know, we've had, of course, we've got Stingrays. We have, uh, you know, Concepts, Mako Sharks, Manta Rays. We want to keep something in the Corvette family. And there actually is a sea creature called the Electric Ray. And we kind of patterned our our rear uh, deck lid logo to be like, the, like that. And um, it is exciting to have a new Corvette in, in the lineup. Uh, in addition to what um, we, were we were talking about, when we were first conceiving the E-Ray, there was a lot of questions, you know, engineering, staff, so how is this different from Z06? You guys are asking me how it's different. And we really use the analogy where the Z06 is more like a scalpel, you know, it has a, it's a trap weapon. It really does that very well. The E-Ray is more of the Swiss Army knife where it does so many things well, like, like Josh and Tetra pointing out. You know, of course, the incredible acceleration, it's incredible handling on the road because they all will drive. But it's a little more uh, a sophisticated GT versus a race car for the street. And uh, it has the all wheel drive capability, which you can drive this all year. Now, I know all the, talk to all of you guys, and I always see that, oh, it's a, it's a sad day, whatever it is, October, November, December. I'm putting the car away. Maybe you know, we'll see it next spring. And maybe some people still do that, but with an E-Ray, there's no reason to do that anymore with the standard all-season tires. And they really do provide incredible performance in the rain and snow, but they're also incredible in the dry, too. I mean, I would challenge people that you even know the difference between a PS4S on a street drive or on Tail of the Dragon or your favorite road. The car really uh, sticks great. And then, uh, like I said, the, the mission wasn't really fuel efficiency, but you do get that benefit. And I know people say, well, do we really care? But when you're going on a trip and you get the same efficiency relative to the Stingray that we all enjoy, you can go over 400 miles on a tank very easily. It makes it a really great long distance tour as well. So design-wise, um, like I said, it's based on the wider uh, Z06 chassis. But we did some change to meet the body color accent standard because we thought it was more fitting with its persona of a more sophisticated high-tech GT. You can still get the carbon flash as an option if you prefer that. Also, you notice the corner, the corner exit exhaust. And we did an all-new 
wheel design, especially for the E-Ray, which uh, I think a lot of our, our favorite, you see the one here, has the carbon flash with the machine edge. We have all black version, a standard titanium version, and a very high polished version as well. So make sure you come over to our uh, Chevrolet uh, Corvette Team 10 and, and check those out. Now, um, in addition, for 24, we have, uh, across all the Corvette lineup, we have new colors. This is a new Seawolf Gray. It's a tri-coat color um, that we're showing here. But in our tent, you can also see the new Riptide Blue, really nice bright blue. And we have the new um, Cacti Green, which a lot of, it's getting a lot of fans. A lot of people were skeptical about it, but seeing it in real life, I think it's getting a lot of fans also. And this car, also is showing our new interior uh, combo for 24. It's called Artemis. It's a kind of a khaki green gray color. Again, a very uh, sport luxury look. We like it, and it's um, again, it's getting some some fans as well. Um, also, you know, we were talking about before when we kicked this off how we get input from coming to Carlisle, how we learn so much from everybody, and so some of the things that we've added based on your input was we have, of course we've had the, the hood um, now has a, a power pull down closer, a soft close hood just like the trunk does because the hood is really, let's face it, it's also a, a trunk as well and the core back so it makes it easy to have to slam the hood like you used to before and push it down, it just pulls it, pulls it down. The other thing, convertible retractable hardtop has been very popular. We've sold more convertible, um, highest for convertible percentage on Corvette since the 1960s. But the one thing I was here, you know, people ask me, they go, they want me to pop the hood or pop the, they want to see the engine. So now we have a new option. It's a, it's a convertible engine appearance package. Uh, so under the tonneau, there's a window to the engine and you can also get the different engine cover options that go with that. And now we have a way to, to show your friends and, and admire the beautiful, either the small block V8 or the, L, or the LT6 in the Z06 engines now. And, and additionally, we've, uh, we've added across all Corvettes uh, a bunch of safety features. Chevrolet, so people are, these are things that people are used to having in their cars now. Um, of course, we make the rear camera mirror standard. We've also added uh, uh, lane departure, warning and assist. Um, forward collision alert, automatic emergency braking, IntelliBeam, high beam assist. These are kind of things that they, people expect in cars. But Corvette, you know, is a driver's car, so we made these things, it's up to you if you want to use them. But we're trying to encourage people to use them, so we made them as less intrusive as possible. So when you're driving, it's not, it's not in your way of your fun uh, driving experience as well uh, for 24. And then also, um, we also have a Stingray uh, carbon flash, we've made that in the regular palette, the black metallic. And there's a new set of wheel designs we have in two, two finishes, five split spoke wheel for Stingray. You can't forget about Stingray, obviously, it's our bread and butter. So we have another new wheel look uh, for Stingray for 24. So finally, I would just like to brag about a few things that we're all, that the whole team is proud of. First of all, we've now won the J.D. Powers Quality Award uh, for luxury sports cars three years in a row now. Thank you. And not, and not only that, last year, we did win just for the segment, we won for the entire industry. The best quality score for any car or truck in all of the segments was Corvette. So I know you'll have friends, maybe they're driving something from Europe or Asia, and just tell them if they want to improve their quality and their quality of life and their fun, they should drive a Corvette instead. Yeah. And, and then we're also, um, of course, the uh, Blue Book, uh, Kelly Blue Book Resale Value Award, which is easy to get when you guys are selling these for more than you pay for them. And uh, another one that we're really proud of too is the Performance Car of the Year, both road and track. And Motor Trend have their own performance car of the year competitions, and the Corvette Z06 won both of those. And for Car and Driver Magazine, we won the word continuing to be in the 10 best uh, selection as well. And then finally, um, 
Anybody watch racing? Corvette racing fans? Do you? Anybody watch the 24 Hours of Le Mans? We uh, won our class. It's the 100th anniversary of the 24 Hours of Le Mans, so it's a very special year. And Corvette, we're in a probably the, the most crowded class. There's 21 cars. There was eight Porsches, seven Ferraris, five Aston Martins, and just one Corvette. All those cars finished behind the one Corvette. So we're the champion. And, and uh, the organization, the World Endurance Championship, they've been encouraging us, uh, we started this last year, that, that they've encouraged us not just to bring the one car Corvette to Le Mans, but to compete in the Global Series of World Endurance. So we have two races to go, but we've already clinched the World Championship for Corvette in that series. So I would um, encourage everybody, if you haven't, to think of come by, to see our Chevrolet Corvette team tent, and there's a, you can sit in the cars, you can see the chassis they're talking about, you can ask us questions, and we'll be here all day. Thanks, Harlan. Awesome job going through it all. Harlan didn't mention the price. Obviously, it's not inexpensive. $104,000 is where the E-Ray starts, but you get an incredible amount uh, for your money. Um, between the battery, the motor, a lot of the lightweight stuff, I mean, ceramic brakes by themselves, like eight grand uh, option. So um, at 104, it might sound pretty expensive, but when you look at the content you get and you look at other cars that use hybridization as a performance enabler, there's some pretty high-end cars that do that, and you're talking three times the price uh, to get into one of those. Um, and the, I just want to add on to what you're saying, guys. And the other thing, when you look at the competitors, the McLaren, the Ferrari, even the Porsche, they're all six-cylinder cars. They, they, have, they needed the space, because they, and the, and, and the McLaren and uh, Ferrari, they kept it rear drive. We went all-wheel drive. We're the only naturally aspirated V8 with electrification and all-wheel drive available. And we kind of felt, we didn't have to do a Carlisle clinic to know that I think we'd rather have eight cylinders than six, I think. Thanks, Arlen. Anyway, my, my wrap-up comments will just be, you know, a lot of people are kind of skeptical about this car. It's like, what, how does it fit in? You know, people didn't understand the Z06, and we brought the Z06 back. Now it's a global icon. Everybody knows what Z06 is. We expect the E-Ray to do the same thing. We talked kind of an overview, but people are probably still fun. I wonder, I wonder if that's really for me or not. There's some concerns about the, the battery life. We've got eight-year, 100,000-mile warranty on the battery. It's not like the battery goes off the, the deep end. Uh, the battery we expect to last for the life of the car, uh, just like anything, like your phones, anything else, eventually battery energy storage capability starts to deteriorate slightly, very small amounts. The truth is we actually are extremely light on this battery. We only use a fraction of its capability. So we're not like even though the car is driving hard, the battery is actually not that stressed at all. And so we expect it to the last uh, the life of the car. And even if you lose a little capacity, the car just adapts to that. It changes the way it does the region. You might not get as much energy out, but it'll still feel uh, very much the same. So one of the things I like about this car is it's always on. It's always ready for anything. So even in our rear-wheel drive cars where you have 60% all the way down the back, maybe you're in a light and you need to get ahead of somebody. If it's wet, you might, and if you're sitting next to an all-wheel drive car, you might have second thoughts. Not this thing. You don't have second thoughts about being anybody. Dry, wet, anything. This car just gets up and goes. It's astonishing off the line. And, you know, one thing about electric motors that's great is they have peak torque at zero RPM, like right off the line. Internal combustion has zero torque at zero RPM. So you kind of have to have it built so that the two play together really nice, both from a mechanical standpoint and from a sound standpoint. Like I said, you don't lose that great American V8 sound. But when you really get on it and you hear the powerful motor up front start to drive, you get a symphony of those two sounds, and it's pretty intoxicating. I think once people start to hear that for real, start to appreciate it, I think they're going to like that sound of speed. So this fall, we're going to put a bunch of media in the car, um, and so you'll start to see the third-party driving impressions come out, and I'm very confident that they're going to confirm what we've been telling you guys about what's great about this car. So like Carlin said, uh, be sure to come by the tent. Josh, you want to add something? Yeah, I just, just to build on what Tad said, I mentioned we're, we could all talk about this a long time and we'll remember things. Uh, I forgot to mention that you, 
you can uh, mode the E-Ray when you come in to start it up to drive in pure electric mode if you want to. And you'll get, it depends on a lot of factors, the state of charge of the battery and how fast you're driving and whether you're going uphill or downhill, but it'll be about three to four miles. A typical use case for that we call uh, neighborhood exit. So for example, you're leaving early in the morning and you you're, want to be curious to the neighbors, that could be a use case. It's not the mission of E-Ring to be able to drive it in pure electric, and I've had a few people ask me about that they heard that after four miles, the E-Ray, you know, the electric motor just stops working. And Ted's touched on it a little bit. This, this, the E-Ray's powertrain layout, power delivery, fun factor is automatic. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to worry about it. And I promise you that nearly all of the time while driving, the electric motor is engaged. Whether it's from your right foot or from your left foot or coasting, it's either helping you put a great big wide smile on your face with acceleration or recapturing energy wherever possible to bring it back into the battery. So you don't have to think about, again, you don't plug it in, you don't have to think about the state of charge of the battery. We're managing all of that for you. And if you want to pack the battery as full as possible, in an anticipatory way, say that the next morning you're going to leave early, like my earlier example, you can use a feature called Charge Plus, and that will set the target state of charge of the high voltage battery a little bit higher, so if you want to top it off, you can do that. But you don't need to drive around in that mode. Again, it's just one more thing that all this technology and the E-Ray is done, not just for technology's sake, we're not trying to meet a mandate. It really makes the car more fun to drive, more engaging, and you don't have to worry about all the systems going on. You just drive the car and enjoy it. Tell them about your drags and your testing. Yeah, we, we have rough jobs. Uh, so I, I had to go with a few of the guys and test the E-Ray on a drag strip. Uh, that's where we, we validated the blistering acceleration performance. In fact, the guy at the drag strip, harder, you know, running the tree, has obviously in a lot of fast cars had a drag strip. That's, that's his job. So it's probably pretty hard to impress a guy running a tree at a drag strip. But after a few passes, he came up to some of us and whispered, of course, the car was still in camouflage. And all the rest of the track was closed down to the public. And he asked, are you guys really going to sell this? People are going to buy this? Uh, just a testament to a third party endorsement uh, of how capable the car is. But on the way back from the end of the drag strip, uh, to go down to the staging lanes in the burnout box, the battery was already replenished from the drag strip run. So that gives you an indication of how quickly power flows in and out of the battery. It's remarkable. You can beat on the car on the drive. By the time you get home into your driveway, the battery's pretty much full. It's hard to deplete it. It's very difficult to deplete it. So anyway, enough about E-Rains, Josh, that we can go on and on and on. Um, we took some questions yesterday, and we'll try it again today. Uh, we'll see how this works out. So, can we take questions from anybody? Yes, right here. Availability. Availability. Okay, so our plan, we've been saying all along, we're going to start building them this fall, and we still plan to do that. Uh, the wild port, of course, is the UAW potential work stoppage. Um, so, if you read on the news that the UAW is shutting down General Motors, it's more than likely going to affect Bowling Green, which will just delay our plans. But the car's essentially ready to go. Uh, we have thousands and thousands of miles on our captured test fleet, like the pre-production cars. And so um, the car is getting its final polish and we'll be ready to, to ship when we can build them. So hopefully get this fall. I, I will remind people too, like we did last year when we were talking about ZL6 launch, that similarly with the E-Ray, we are going to start deliberately slow and measured. Uh, we want to make sure everything about the car and the systems that build it and the quality checks are correct. So uh, those of you on the waiting list, be patient. You will get your car. Uh, but when you hear that we've started production, you shouldn't expect just a flood of E-rays uh, to be out on the road. We're going to do it in a deliberate way, much like we did to the co It's a very technically complicated car. You think about an E-ray convertible as we have here. And I've challenged people to think of a more complicated consumer product than this. It's enormous. The number of parts to a car like this is just incredible, which means the supply chain has to be incredible, and every single one of those supply chain, every person along the way has to learn how to do their job and do it well, perfect quality. So there's a, there's a natural ramp to it, 
and uh, we'll be following that ramp. How much? How much? How Did much? you just walk up? Yeah. 104. It's a bargain, trust me. <laughs> I haven't explained it to all these people. They're all getting their wallets out. <laughs> Who else got a question? What's it sound like? What's it sound like? Uh, I was describing it earlier, so it's got the small block V8, so if you like the way a stingray sounds, that's kind of the way it sounds, but when you get on it and the electric motor starts whirring, it kind of blends together, especially at high speed, you'll notice that a, a, the, it sounds like a powerful, really powerful electric motor, so it sounds like that's what it is, and it, the sounds kind of blend together, but you never lose the V8 sound. Any more? Over here. Question is on color constraints, and again, this is pretty much an annual thing with Corvette. And when we bring out new colors, the Bowling Green Factory ramp likes to start the new colors at a lower amount to get the full experience with it before they go to full. And so you'll see that go away pretty soon as they uh, as soon as they start the game. It's a pretty normal thing that happens with Corvette every year. But everybody's so well connected now, it seems like everything is like a new thing that we never did before. <laughs> but it's basically any new color we come out with as a ramp up to ensure the best quality. It's not just bowling green. So if you look at this car right here, we don't paint every single panel. We don't paint mirrors, for example. We don't paint the, the roof. We don't paint this tunnel panel. And so every supplier that provides that, there's different suppliers for all of those, we have to get the color match, the perfect color match. And so it's not just people learning at bowling how to paint the parts there, but the parts you have to buy on the outside, they all have to be brought together so that it matches perfectly. That's why there's a little bit of a ramp to it. You know what the story is about? Yellow. That's right. That's right. So we just talked about the warranty, eight years on a thousand miles, and the battery doesn't fall out, you know, it doesn't yeah. short out or anything. We expect it to last the life of the car, like the other components of the car. It's designed to essentially last the forever, and that's why we have a longer warranty on the battery than we do anything else in the car. No, it's lithium ion battery. They're pretty robust. It's not like a, what you think of a lead acid battery sitting, you know, not on a tender or something. It, it doesn't. It doesn't really work like that. It's pretty robust. And yes, in the gray. Are we going to race the E-Ray? Well, what we race depends entirely on the people who make the rules for the race car. Uh, as far as I know, there's no consideration of an E-Ray series or something like that. Who knows what the future holds? Any more questions? Okay. Are you going to have an open production for this, or is it going to be limited like the CO set? The question is, is the volume going to be limited? So we're trying to build to customer demand. We're trying to do it for CO6. We've made 1,000 CO6s a month. The problem is the demand is through the roof. Yeah, I know. So when you say open, we are capacity constrained in bowling rate. We can only run the line so fast, and everything is, how many parts we make is determined by how many parts we can get. And so constraints and suppliers you never heard of can slow us down. So we actually have to fix our schedules, which we do well in advance, based on the number of parts we can actually get. So E-Ring has a bunch of bespoke parts on it. If it turns out those parts are constrained, that'll limit it. But it's not like we're saying we're going to put a serial number, we're only going to make 1,000. We're going to try. Believe me, we are going to try so hard to, to make as many cars as people want. You might have to wait a little bit. Uh, but actually, in some ways, and that's another point, but some people are thinking, well, it shares a body style with the Z06. Every e ray you make, does that take away from a Z06 car? It does not. We can make both cars. It, it's, it, their production depends only on specific parts for that car. So it's not either or. We don't have that problem. Anybody else? Okay, we're going to call it. Thank you very much. Appreciate you guys listening. If you have questions on our side, don't hesitate to come on down and ask us.
that's going to end today's video and the uh, Corvette tour I brought to you by no other than myself John Schaff uh, C7 Corvette channel I hope hope you guys enjoyed this presentation of the Corvette Museum in Bowling Green, Kentucky as you hit the like button share button and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button so you will know when we are doing a upload again, again we thank you for taking this journey with us to the Corvette Museum in Bowling Green, Kentucky Those of you that wish to uh, purchase yourself a uh, C8 through the Corvette Museum here in Bowling Green, Kentucky, uh, you can do so for $998, and you can also uh, you can also purchase the uh, insurance for your vehicle. Those of you that wish to uh, track your car. I'll go as far as say I probably get 60% of it. Yeah. Think about the Corvette Museum. Uh, the insurance covers you uh, on and off of the uh, racetrack. And those of you that wish to uh, wish to uh, you know track your vehicle. Hey uh, most most major carriers most major insurance carriers, if you're going to track your vehicle, they will not cover you on the racetrack. But uh, if you get your uh, insurance through the Corvette Museum, uh, you're covered both on and off of a, a racetrack if you so uh, choose to uh, track your vehicle. Me myself, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't dream of having a C8 man and putting it on the racetrack. Whether it be a Stingray, a Z51, a Z06, a ZR1, or a Zorro model. Uh, that's just something I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't do. Again, I'm John Shaff. Thank you guys for tuning in to my uh, Corvette channel. We hope you guys enjoy this uh, presentation. And we'll see you again in the next video upload. Yeah, now time, not now it's time for the long drive, long drive back to uh, back to Birmingham. Woo! <laughs> About three, three and a half hours. Woo! I would go out to the racetrack, but I don't think they're gonna be open this late. 
uh, they open late on the weekends, which, which it is uh, like Friday, I think. But I don't know if it started Friday of his start Saturday. Uh, I think I'm about ready. I'm about ready to head back. Anyway, I thank you guys for tuning in. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, we thank you for watching.